Here's how to ace any math test in just five steps. The first step to acing any math test is to think of it like a puzzle or a game. In my experience of taking math classes and math tests, whenever I play a game, I get excited. But whenever I think of something like a test, my brain just immediately shuts off. There are many parallels to math tests and video games that we play. Let's compare math tests to a level from the iconic game Super Mario Bros. In both tests and in games, you have obstacles that you have to overcome, whether this be that you, you might not know how to solve a problem or the various steps themselves. Sometimes you might reach very short setbacks, like what Mario just encountered with that pipe. But what's more important is to acknowledge that math has patterns, just like games. And once you lose or once you mess up once, you'll have a strategy or you'll understand how to approach future problems in order to reach the end. Like a game, every math problem requires a strategy and every test requires a strategy too. And these next few steps go over planning how we will spend our time. Step two, make sure that you are familiar with the material. You would never want to go into a test unprepared. That's like driving a car without a license or playing chess without a strategy. When you're learning the concepts, it's important to understand why they work. Knowing why will help you better understand how they work, which is key to help you do well. Here's an example. Let's assume that on your math test, one of your topics is domain and range. Um, that topic may seem daunting at first until you break it up into smaller pieces. So the most basic concept is, what is a function? A function is an entity in which you put one value in and you get one value out, and it's typically represented by the variables x and y. Whatever you put into your function, you get a y value out, and sometimes some x values do not work, and some y values do not work, and the combination of what works and doesn't is called domain and range. Make sure to pay attention to what's being taught, and if for some reason school is not working out, just watch our YouTube videos, a bunch of other math YouTube channels, in which I'll link in the description, as well as our math Discord server. <laughs> Practice, practice, practice. Carrying on the video game analogy, we covered that games are full of patterns. In Super Mario Bros, for example, if you play level 1-1, that same Goomba comes over and you died probably the first time playing, but now you recognize, hey, there's an obstacle here that I got to avoid, and then you learn to avoid it and eventually make it to the end. And those skills actually carry over for you to do well in other levels, which have a similar structure. They're just kind of arranged differently. In math, it's kind of the same thing. There's only a certain amount of patterns that exist, and only if you keep doing the problems, and if you keep playing the game, you will be able to observe what all of those patterns are. I'll give you an example. Let's identify some patterns using domain and range. Let's say you have y equals x. What does this function look like? If you graph it, it looks like something like this. Based on the equation, we know that x can be anything and y can be anything because x and y are equal to each other. Therefore, the domain and range would be all real numbers. But what if you had something like y equals 2x? What would this function look like? If you graph it on paper or use a calculator, it looks something like this. In order to find the domain and range, let's compare this to the original function we had, y equals x. Here are two functions next to each other. We can clearly see that y equals 2x is steeper because it has a greater slope, but overall, you could actually put any x value into both of those functions and get a y value. So both of these functions would have domain and range of minus infinity to infinity. After you do some more problems, you begin to see the pattern that y equals any a times x has a domain and range of all real numbers. And the reason you knew this was because you practiced and applied the skills that you learned so that you can be able to tackle any sort of problem that you might get on the test. Step four, conquering test anxiety. You feel prepared after doing steps one through three. Now it's time for the next part of our strategy, actually taking the test. So it's completely normal to feel anxious. Um, I've definitely felt that before every test, but what helps me, this is my strategy for conquering test anxiety, to imagine that you're taking this test in your favorite place in the whole wide world. It can be any place in which you feel comfortable. For me, it could be my room, but for you, it could be anything. Also, another thing that's important is think of this test as a practice. 
not necessarily a practice test, but practice problems that you've done over and over again in step three. That way, uh, you'll feel that there's no strings attached and you can use the strategies that, are, that you've been using before to tackle these problems without feeling the over, uh, without feeling the burden of it being a test. And also think to yourself that you're way more than a number. Even if this test goes wrong, it's not the end of the world. I'm saying this as somebody who finished high school and had her own fair share of tests that she did not do well in. A few positive affirmations also help to boost confidence. Keep telling yourself, I can do it, or I am excited. That part was inspired by Pink Pencil Math. I'll link her channel in the description. Also, focus on the here and now. When you receive your paper, take a deep breath before beginning, and we can now move on to step five. go into game mode. Recall the strategies that you used earlier and see where they can be applied. Take things very slowly, one step at a time, while staying within your time limit. This is also why practice helps. I'm pretty sure in Super, in Super Mario Bros you are timed and so even in a game you have time limits but if you practice you can get it and now it's time to actually apply it on this test. Next is to apply whatever strategies work for you in terms of approaching the question. If underlining important information helps, do it. If, um, if reading the question three or four times helps you, then do it. One by one, use what you practice to go through every level or question in your path until you reach the end of your test. Also, always do the easy problems first before doing the hard ones, and no matter what, Answer every question because there is a chance that you'll get it correct, but if you miss a question, there's a 100% chance that you're going to get it wrong. Before you knew it, you reached the end. Feel proud of yourself and pat yourself on the back. All you can do is wait. So now you've reached the end of the video. Use these five tips to ace any math test and let me know how you do. To close out this video, here's a short song to remember everything we talked about today. Math is a game, then next you'll learn. Practice and do your best, a good grade you will 